The Lord be with you. Today is Friday, where we continue to prepare for Sunday. This Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for the blessings of your Son and your Holy Spirit in giving us forgiveness and eternal salvation. Amen. Today we look at the propers for the day, beginning with the introit of the day, which comes from portions of Psalm 66. It begins with the, ant the antiphon, Shout for joy to God all the earth. Alleluia. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Alleluia. Now, as we saw, the theme uh, for this Sunday is rejoicing, and it comes from the uh, first word in the introit in Latin, uh, jubilate, rejoice. And so in English, it's translated this way, shout for joy to God. And <clears throat> we see um, this theme emphasized in Psalm 66, which is a psalm of praise. It is a psalm of praise for God's glorious actions uh, toward his people. In other words, his, his actions of actually saving his people, of restoring his people, which we talked about yesterday uh, when his people are, are suffering, when his people are, 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 um, are scattered and he, 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 he redeems them, he, he saves them, he, he restores them. So <clears throat> this is the glory of God to save his people. So we continue then in the introit proper, Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. So we see from these verses of Psalm 66, that uh, this, is, uh, this is what characterizes our life uh, in Christ, that instead of, um, instead of uh, devolving into the, um, the uh, um, despair of, uh, of the suffering, um, that, that comes from the suffering that we endure, we actually give lives, uh, we live lives of thanksgiving where we look uh, not just to our present circumstances where things may look anything but as cause for rejoicing, but we look rather to what God has done, what the actions he has accomplished in the past where he has saved his people. And so for us, um, in, in our day and age, we would look, of course, first of all, to the cross and the empty tomb where God accomplished salvation for us. We would also look to baptism where God brought salvation to us particularly. And we would look to uh, his holy word and also to the proclamation of that word where he brings his forgiveness and his strength to us in his word. And then also to the place where he invites us to partake of his holy meal in which he actually gives us himself, his body and blood for our forgiveness and also for strengthening our faith. So this is the cause for rejoicing and enables, to enables us to live lives of thanksgiving to him. The collect of the day, almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth so that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant faithfulness to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's church, that they may avoid whatever is contrary to their confession, and follow all such things as are pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This prayer is... Uh, not the norm in that it is quite lengthy. Uh, the address is to 
God the Father, the God who is almighty, as we saw in the Old Testament reading. And what does God do? He shows those in error the light of his truth so that they may return to the way of righteousness. Now, <clears throat> it's always sad when those who are in the faith, those who are Christians, when they uh, turn from God, when they stray from him and leave, uh, leave the church, as is, state, as is described here in the Collect, as the way of righteousness. So um, when they leave, when they reject him, God continues to come after them and shows them the light of his truth so that they can see their error and repent of it and return. So we pray that all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ church, that we would avoid, and, and the original, um, uh, I, I'm not sure if this was originally written in Latin or what, what um, language, but but the original word was was much stronger than avoid. It's you know to to eschew. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that word eschew. Um, but to you know to to forcefully um, cast out whatever is contrary to their confession and follow us all such things as are pleasing to to him. So this is the um, challenge, shall we say? This is the, um, the, uh, the difficult road that we Christians are now on. Now that we have been saved, we're constantly battered by all kinds of forces attacking us, uh, trying to tempt us to, to stray away. And so we pray God to grant us faithfulness and that we would uh, just get rid of all of those things that are contrary to uh, the holy confession of faith, the truth of God's word, and rather follow him in his ways and do all those things that are pleasing to him. The verse is from, uh, from a, <clears throat> a portion of Psalm 1, 111 and a portion of, of Luke 24. Alleluia, he sent redemption to his people. Alleluia. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Alleluia. Now, in Psalm 111, uh, a very uh, brief phrase, which kind of captures a lot of what we've been talking about. He sent redemption to his people. So God is the one who acts in, in regards to saving his people. And in that regard, then, a quote from Luke 24 from our Lord himself. Was it not necessary that the Christ, that is the Messiah, should suffer these things and enter into his glory? So, so Jesus, um, this is after he rose from the grave um, and speaking to the disciples on the Emmaus Road and, and, and saying, um, was it not necessary? Did, the, did the, the Old Testament, the prophets, not prophesy for a reason that the Messiah would suffer and die. And that is how salvation would be brought about. And so this is a good thing. Now, obviously, it's a horrific thing of, of what happened to our Lord in, in being um, <clears throat> in um, his you know, arrest, the trial, the, the beatings and all of that, and of course, being killed. But he chose this. In other words, he laid down his life <clears throat> on our behalf. So it was necessary for him to do it, and it was his joy to do it for our salvation. The hymn of the day is hymn 483 in the Lutheran service book, With High Delight, Let Us Unite. It was written by Georg Vetter, who lived from 1536 to 1599. Verse 1, With High Delight, Let Us Unite, in songs of great jubilation. Ye pure in heart, all bear your part. Sing Jesus Christ our salvation. To set us free, forever he is risen and sins to all earth's ends. Good news to every nation.
nation. Now we see, of course, with this hymn of the day, the uh, emphasis on um, jubilation, rejoicing. And so we gather with high delight and, and sing to, to Jesus Christ, who is our salvation. Um, he, having risen, he uh, has ascended and brings this good news to everyone. Verse 2, true God, he first from death has burst, forth into life all subduing. His enemy doth vanquished lie, his death has been death's undoing. And yours shall be like victory, or, or death and grave, saith he, who gave his life for us, life renewing. Now, the uh, hymn writer here picks up on a theme in the scriptures about the resurrection of Christ, namely that he is the first fruits of our resurrection. So, as stated here, if you were to take this just on its own, um, he first from death has burst. Um, that, that's not the case, actually, because there are a number of inst instances in the Old Testament where people are raised to life, and there and certainly there are in the New Testament where Christ our Lord himself uh, brought people back uh, to life from death. So the teaching of Scripture, and as, as, as uh, brought about here in the hymn, of Christ being the first fruits, him being the first to step forth from the grave, um, is not first in terms of he's the first one to ever have done it. It's rather he is the first one <clears throat> in, which brings about the, um, the uh, in other words, that it, because he has done it, that is what enables us then on the last day to be able to step forth from our grave. So when you think about this, all of those people, who were raised to life by the mouth of a prophet in the Old Testament or by the mouth of our Lord himself in the New Testament, all of those people ended up dying again. Christ is the only one, um, and certainly the first, and now here's where it would uh, apply, that he is the first one to step forth from the grave and never die again. So we are we are going to rise from the grave because Christ first did it. And so when we rise from the grave on the last day, we will never die again. Now, the other part of this verse talks about Christ's death was actually the victory over death. And so um, obviously the resurrection sealed the deal. Uh, without the resurrection, it was all for naught. But uh, I, I, I love this here, that his death has been death's undoing. And then verse 3, let praises ring, give thanks, and bring to Christ our Lord adoration, his honor speed by word and deed to every land, every nation. So shall his love give us above from misery and death set free, all joy and full consolation. So because of all this good news, uh, we let our praises ring. This goes once again back to the theme of jubilation, rejoicing, and we give to Christ all honor and glory, and then to every land, every nation. Um, his love goes forth and the gospel, and so then um, is opportunity then for all to uh, join in in this joy and um, all joy and full consolation. So again, we leave this up to God. We rejoice in his salvation of us. We get the word out to others so that they too may be saved. And all the while, whether we're suffering, whether we are, um, you know, rejoicing in our blessings, we're rejoicing all the time because of what Christ has done for us and for the world. So let us close with prayer. Heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for salvation in your Son. We pray that you bless us each day of our lives, and even to all eternity. Amen. The Lord's peace be with you.